As a kid, Tony Stark was one of my biggest heroes and inspirations. Here was a superhero whose real identity was every bit as interesting as his superheroic alter ego, whose only power was his smarts and who could solve almost any problem by applying his super genius intellect. The Marvel Universe is actually full of super geniuses, but none are quite like Tony Stark, and we'll get into that in a moment. The exciting thing is though that characters almost like this really do exist in real life, individuals who really have changed the world with their vision. In this video, I'm going to attempt to unfold some of what makes those people unique. So genius is once described more simply as simply having an extraordinarily high IQ. The problems with this definition though are well documented. More and more then, psychologists are converging on a notion of genius that places greater emphasis on creativity and eminent achievement. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. In fact, when we attempt to post more to my IQ assessment, which is also more than likely how we would assess the IQ of a fictional character such as Tony Stark, we look more examples of brilliance through accomplishments than anything else. It is not enough then to simply be highly skilled at subjects to put in your 10,000 hours. To be Tony Stark levels of super genius, you need to change the game in one or more fields with paradigm shifting ideas or world changing contributions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not Tony, I'm not Tony Stark. Stark. Neither practicing dual end back tests nor using nootropics is going to help you to accomplish this. So where do you start? First, we need to seek to expand our knowledge as far as possible. Creativity, it is said, is neurologically nothing more than the unique combination of two existing ideas. In this way, the brain can be thought of almost like an input-output machine. The more knowledge you have in your fields of interest then, the greater chance you have of noticing a novel connection. And the more disparate fields you introduce into that mix, the more opportunity there'll be for creativity. At the same time, as discussed in my video on neuroplasticity, Constantly learning keeps the brain more plastic by encouraging the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor and other key chemicals. When did you become an expert in thermonuclear astrophysics? Last night. At the same time, learning particular skills can give you a particular set of tools and actually help your thinking. Tony Stark is able to think like an engineer because he's studied engineering, and the kind of logical resourcefulness that this teaches can also be applicable to many other areas. I highly recommend learning to program as a tool for thinking. It's something that anyone can do with countless practical benefits, and it's a brilliant cognitive workout, as Steve Jobs says. In the same way that computer programming teaches you, in a slightly different way, how to think. And so I, I view computer science as a liberal art. It should be something that everybody learn, you know, takes, a, takes a year in their life. One of the courses they take is you know, learning how to program. I happen to agree, and likewise, Elon Musk, who was consulted on how Tony Stark should be portrayed in the movies, is known to have begun programming at a young age. Coincidence? I've been programming since I was in primary school, and I think it's massively helped the way I think, my resourcefulness, and my ability to juggle complex ideas in my brain. But go beyond that too and learn languages, martial arts, juggling, learning physical skills is very beneficial, and whatever else you can. In future, I'll be covering accelerated learning techniques in an in-depth video, so stay tuned for that one. With more input and tools for thinking, then we now need to start coaxing out these ideas into unique combinations. So how do we achieve that ideation? Surprisingly, the worst thing you can try and do is force an idea. When we're stressed or highly motivated, even highly caffeinated, we're in a state of fight or flight. This raises the blood pressure and the heart rate, and it also gives us a kind of tunnel vision. It makes us focus, yes, but it also prevents us from thinking outside the box. Daydreaming is not useful when we're being chased by a lion, after all. In an old video on thinking outside the box, I discussed how cognitive biases, such as functional fixedness, can block the creative process, and how any form of extrinsic stress or even motivation makes this harder to overcome. Even working towards a monetary goal actually prevents divergent thinking. This is why engaging in menial tasks or going for inspiration walks can help to let those great ideas come. It engages the default mode network of brain regions, sometimes also referred to as the imagination network. This is why Einstein famously stumbled upon special relativity while working at the patent office. And it's why being present isn't always superior to the default mode network and letting the mind wander. Right now there's a big obsession with being in the moment, but that's only useful in certain circumstances. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Walking is particularly effective at promoting creativity and especially when surrounded by nature as it's been shown to help invoke a sense of good mood and calm which is conducive to creativity. 
allow your mind to drift off occasionally, and you may naturally engage in what Jung referred to as active imagination. Cal Newport, in his book Deep Work, suggests another unique form of meditation designed to facilitate deep creative thought. He calls it productive meditation, the idea being that you dedicate some time to simply thinking about an issue you need to solve. Meditation where the idea isn't to empty the mind, but actually to fill it. This still teaches focus because you're focusing on that idea, but like I say, it demonstrates that completely emptying the mind and being present isn't always the optimal state. I suggest that you can also use this to practice big idea thinking, to work on your creative problem solving muscles by challenging yourself to solve problems. Come up with new ideas or navigate hypothetical situations. I call this cognitive simulation training. So while going for a walk or just sitting quietly, ask yourself, what would you do if you became the prime minister or president? What great new app could you create if you had the time and skill? Simply dedicating time to creative thought is actually how I've come up with all the ideas for my most successful apps. Or if you had to write the next James Bond movie, what would happen? How do you think the universe started? And if you want to become a futurist, try predicting how today's technology is going to change the world and how you can help with that. Reading books on philosophy can also be a great benefit. This way you're practicing thinking big and the said principle, specific adaptations to imposed demands, suggests that this would be enough to help you become much better at that kind of thinking. Use it or lose it, as they say. Plus, we know that the brain loves big idea thinking, that this is incredibly good for brain health as a whole. Big idea thinking is when you take in ideas from disparate areas, you combine it with your rich knowledge that you already have, and you form some generalized, higher level way of thinking. I've shown in randomized trials, when you engage in big idea thinking, you increase your brain at all levels of health. Or better yet, find a job that forces you to learn and solve complex problems every day. Oh, and you can also use this type of meditation to come up with contingency plans for various outcomes. Tony Stark, like Batman, has a plan already devised for every eventuality. You could too. Like I said though, Tony Stark is quite unlike the other Marvel super geniuses. He is removed from your Hank Pym's, your Bruce Banner's and your Reed Richards. Why? Because he manages to remain grounded and cool. Well, as cool as any fictional comic book character can be. Tony Stark is as far removed from your stereotypical Big Bang Theory super nerd as it gets. And I think this is a nice break from the stereotype. He is not just a scientific genius, but also charming, persuasive and a business genius. And this is what allows him to have such influence over the Marvel Universe. In the real world, being a genius is of no use unless you're able to leverage that intellect, inspire others and affect change. Regarded as one of the smartest people in the world today in terms of his IQ, Christopher Langan has actually worked most of his life as a bouncer. But the problem is that there really is a noted correlation between high IQs and social awkwardness. Geniuses might actually overanalyze their responses to questions and they might be overly self-aware and able to act in the moment. All of this can cripple them socially. So don't neglect this crucial piece of the puzzle. Practice your social skills. Try CBT and cognitive restructuring. See my recent video for more. Develop your emotional intelligence and make sure to keep yourself grounded and to spend time with a wide variety of different types of people. In his excellent TED talk, Steve Johnson also suggests that most truly great ideas are not born from one mind in those fabled eureka moments, but rather tend to gestate over time and particularly benefit from discussing between big groups. Being able to work with others means that you can bounce ideas off them, and this is often when breakthroughs happen. They want to tell the story of the eureka moment. They want to say, there I was, I was standing there and I had it all suddenly clear in my head. But in fact, if you go back and look at the historical record, it turns out that a lot of important ideas have very long incubation periods. If you want to be highly effective at persuading and inspiring others, then work on eye contact in particular. People who met Steve Jobs and Bill Clinton describe a reality distortion field that they seem to generate that made nearly everyone want to impress them and do what they say. Tim Ferriss suggests that this is something that we can all learn and develop simply by practicing brief eye contact with strangers, obviously in not such a way as to creep them out. I'll leave a link to that blog post in the description down below and I recommend you check it out. I've also noticed this to be the case when watching Tom Cruise, who is a hugely charismatic and persuasive individual. So much so that the excellent YouTube channel Charisma on Command describes his charisma as being almost dangerous. Fun fact, Tom Cruise was a firm favourite to play Tony Stark before RDJ came along and owned the role. Both Tom Cruise and Tony Stark exhibit one identical trait, a supreme and total confidence in their ability and the knowledge that they're 100% correct. This might be why Tony Stark doesn't second guess himself in conversation and it might be why he seems charming rather than awkward. 
He's the smartest person in the room and he knows it, and he doesn't care what others think of him. While you might not get to that point, having a project, a goal or a passion, an area of expertise where you are confident, can help to give you a similar attraction, confidence and indifference to petty office politics or social posturing. It really doesn't matter if the neighbour has a bigger TV, or if your colleague is bitching about you when you've just built an arc reactor in your garage. Tony's level of egotism, meanwhile, makes him persuasive and inspiring, yes, but of course it also has its downsides too. This is where we can see the big flaw in Tony Stark's character, who feels alone and solely responsible for the fate of the entire world at times, leading sometimes to tragic mistakes. So perhaps you don't want an ego quite as big as Tony's, but confidence in what you do is still a necessity if you want to put your brains to good use. Meanwhile, keep learning, keep absorbing information as much as possible, practice using your brain to solve problems, develop your powers of persuasion and engage in meaningful work. Then just relax and let the world changing ideas flow. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did then please leave a like and share it around, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All this stuff really does help, it really does make a difference and I massively appreciate all your support so far. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I've got tons of cool new stuff on the way. The Batcave video has actually been slightly delayed but it's still very much on the way. It's just that I'm currently redecorating and rejigging my home office so this is a good time actually for me to be working on filming that and once that's done I'll have it up soon. I'm also doing a video on the myth versus reality regarding Bruce Lee. Could he really do all that awesome stuff that he's said to? I'm going to be doing a video on how an average person might create a Batman-esque training routine and we've got some really cool martial arts stuff on the way as I teased. I can't give you any more information about that right now but just stay tuned. It's going to be really awesome. I tried some slightly different editing in this one. I'm going for a kind of AMV style. I thought it could be a bit inspiring for those that like me think Tony Stark's awesome. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Let me know down below if you'd like to see more of that kind of editing. So yeah, thanks a ton for watching guys. I massively appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.